Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us thank the Lord for inviting us this Sunday to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, the banquet of God's love. And let us pray in this Mass that we may be helped to live humble and honorable lives so as to always find favor with God. Let us now prepare ourselves to receive Jesus in this Eucharist. Let us be sorry for our sins. Let us beg God's forgiveness. And let us entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. 
God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. The just rejoice and exult before God. They are glad and rejoice. Sing to God, chant praise to His name, whose name is the Lord. The Father of Orphans and the defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. God gives a home to the forsaken. He leads forth prisoners to prosperity. A bountiful rain you shower down O God, upon your inheritance, you restored the land when it languished, your flock settled in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided it for the needy. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire and gloomy darkness, and storm and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such that those who heard begged that no message be farther addressed to them. No. You have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and countless angels in feastal gathering, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven, and God the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand.
Take my yoke upon you, says the Lord, and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to you. Glory to you, O Lord. On the Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. And the people there were observing him carefully. He told the parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, Give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, My friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, When you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends, or your brothers, or your relatives, or your wealthy neighbors, in case they may inv invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, sometimes something as simple as choosing a place to sit reveals many things about ourselves. Kahit na yung simpleng pagpili kung saan ka uupo, marami na yung sinasabi tungkol sa ating sarili. Ngayon po, hindi tayo nakakapili ng ating gustong upuan sa loob ng simbahan dahil merong seat number na ibinibigay sa atin sa ating pagpasok. Pero kung malaya tayong makakaupo sa gusto nating lugar, anong lugar kaya ang pipiliin natin? May mga ang pinipiling lugar yung palaging nasa harapan. Parang nabili na nila yung mga unang upuan. Merong mga palaging ang gusto doon sa likod. Sa huling-huli umuupo para hindi nakikita mula sa altar. Merong mga umuupo sa mga gilid-gilid. Merong mga umuupo na malapit sa electric fan. The, place of, on the places that we sit in reveal something about ourselves. 
Bakit ka dyan umupo? Bakit yan ang pinili mong pwesto? And this is what Jesus observed as he was invited in a banquet as we heard in our gospel this Sunday. People were choosing places of honor. Pinipili nila yung mga upuan para sa mga VIP. Pinipili nila yung kabisera. And Jesus used this occasion to teach these people and all of us an important lesson. Jesus says that if a person seats automatically at the place of honor, that reveals what that person sees himself about himself. Kapag ang inupuan niyan ay yung pinakamahalagang upuan, kahit hindi siya sinasabihan ni Numan, meron niyang sinasabi tungkol sa kanya. Siguro ang tingin niya sa kanyang sarili, sa lahat ng bisita dito, ako ang pinakaimportante. Ako ang VIP. Kaya dapat dito ako sa pinakamahalagang upuan pupuesto. And by sitting at the place of honor, that person demands respect and honor. Dahil ako ay mahalagang tao, dapat akong igalang, dapat akong parangalan, at pinapakita yan sa pag-upo doon sa pinakamahalagang upuan. But Jesus teaches all of us today, that while we all want to be respected and honored, respect cannot be demanded, and honor cannot be presumed. Hindi dahil umupo ka sa pinakamahalagang upuan, sa pinakamataas na pwesto, automatic na na igagalang at paparangalan ka. Respect and honor cannot be demanded. Respect and honor cannot even be commanded. Hindi mo pwedeng iutos na igalang mo ako, parangalan mo ako. Respect and honor cannot even be bought. Hindi mo pwedeng bayaran ng isang tao para sabihin, oh, binabayaran kita kaya igalang mo ako. Respect and honor does not depend on age. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin, mas matanda ako, kaya dapat iginagalang ako. Respect and honor does not depend on educational attainment. Nakatapos ako ng pag-aaral, meron akong master's degree, may doctorate ako, kaya dapat iginagalang ako. Respect and honor does not even depend on the uniform you wear. Nakauniforming pulis, sundalo, o pari. Hindi pwedeng sabihin nga, kita mo ba ang uniformi ko? Kaya dapat igalang ako. Respect and honor does not depend on wealth, on positions of power and prestige. My dear brothers and sisters, respect and honor can only be earned. If you want to be respected, then be respectable. If you want to be honored, then live an honorable life. To the parents among us, the respect and honor of your children cannot be commanded by raising your voice or by shouting. 
kung gusto nating igalang at sundin tayo ng ating mga anak, hindi yan nakukuha sa pasigaw-sigaw. Hindi yan nakukuha sa pagbabanta o sa pananakit. Kung gusto mong sundin ka at igalang ng iyong anak, ipakita mo na kagalang-galang ka. Ipakita mo na may kredibilidad ang iyong mga sinasabi. Dahil paano tayong susundin sa mga bagay na sinasabi natin kung tayo mismo ang unang hindi gumagawa ng mga bagay na pinagagawa natin sa kanila. And the same is true to all of us, whether we are leaders in society, leaders in government, leaders in the church, or as ordinary people, ordinary citizens, if you want respect, then earn it. Kung gusto mong igalang ka, ipakita mong kagalang-galang ka. Kung gusto mong sundin ka, ipakita mong may kredibilidad ka. Kung gusto mong paniwalaan ng mga salita mo, huwag kang manloloko, huwag kang magsisinungaling. Kung ayaw mong siraan ka, ipakita mo na meron kang integridad. Kung gusto mong parangalan ka, ipakita mong nabubuhay ka ng marangal. My dear brothers and sisters, respect and honor cannot be demanded. It can only be earned. And knowing that respect and honor cannot be demanded but only earned is an expression of humility. Ang taong mataas ang tangtingin sa kanyang sarili, hihingin ang respeto at paggalang sa kapwa. Pero ang taong marunong magpakumbaba, alam niya na ang respeto, ang paggalang at pagpaparangal ay ibinibigay, hindi hinihingi. That is why in our first reading today, we are reminded to conduct our affairs with humility and you will be loved more. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. Kapag tayo'y namumuhay ng kagalang-galang at marangal, kahit ang Diyos, pararangalan tayo. And the author of the letter to the Hebrews reminds us in our second reading today that if we imitate Jesus in His humility, then like Jesus, one day we will also be glorified by God. Si Jesus nagpakumbaba at dahil sa kanyang pagpapakumbaba, iniangat siya ng Diyos. Hindi niya inangat ang sarili niya. Ang Diyos ang nagangat sa kanya. Kaya sinabi din Jesus, Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Hindi tayo ang nagtataas sa ating sarili. Kapag tayo ang nagtataas sa ating sarili, lalo tayong ibababa. Pero sa ating pagpapakababa, ang Diyos ang magtataas sa atin. My dear brothers and sisters, let us not demand respect and honor. Let us not presume that people should respect and honor us. 
let us always strive to earn the respect and honor of others. But not only of others, let us always strive to be honorable even in the sight of God. And that is most important, that in the sight of God, we are honorable. Because the honor that this world could give us means nothing if we are not honorable in the sight of God. Kahit anong respeto, kahit anong parangal, kahit anong pagbubunyi ang tanggapin natin mula sa mundong ito, kung hindi ka marangal sa mata ng Diyos, walang saysay ang parangal na ibibigay sa iyo ng mundo. But if we are honorable in the sight of God, then we will also be honorable in the sight of others. Ang marangal sa mata ng Diyos, tiyak, marangal din sa mata ng kanyang kapwa. My dear brothers and sisters, let us always strive to be honorable in the sight of God. Let us live honorably and humbly so that one day the Lord, the host of the banquet, will approach us and tell us, My son, my daughter, my child, move up to a higher position. Move up to the glory of heaven, which I prepared for those who are meek and humble of heart, like my son, Jesus. Please stand. Let us all together profess our faith. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ His only Son, Son our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers of intercession, we come in humility before God Himself, in the company of the saints, and we plead through Jesus, the Mediator, who brings a new covenant. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Bishop Jose, the priests and deacons of our diocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For mutual consideration between workers and employers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For true devotion to Mary, model of humility, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For a spirit of hospitality, free from a desire for praise or gain, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those called through death to the heavenly Jerusalem, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We pray for the people who requested our prayers. And we pray for the intentions offered in this Mass. Lord of justice, defender of the poor and humble, 
we commend our intentions to your provident care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that the people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, may the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy, we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Augustine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyo sa pagdalo sa ating banal na misa ngayong umagang ito dito sa Manila Cathedral. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng kasama natin sa live streaming ng misang ito, lalong-lalo na po sa mga iba't ibang social media platforms at sa mga sumusubaybay sa DWIZIZ TV. Thank you for being part of our community celebrating this Eucharist this Sunday morning. Salamat din po sa lahat ng mga staff at uh, servants ng Manila Cathedral uh, na naglilingkod sa ating misang ito. La, la, uh, gayon din po sa nag-provide ng ating uh, sign language interpretation. Nasa piling po natin ngayon sa Manila Cathedral ang imahe ng Our Lady of the Holy Rosary mula sa Diocesan Shrine and Parish of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary sa Cardona, Rizal. At ang kanyang pagdalaw po dito sa Manila Cathedral ay bahagi ng paghahanda para sa pontifical coronation, canonical coronation of the image of Our Lady on October 7, which is the Feast of the Holy Rosary. Kaya sana po ay maglaan tayo ng panahon na manalangin sa ating mahal na ina, ang Birhen ng Santo Rosario, at nawa sa kanyang tulong ang, at uh, sa kanyang panalangin ay pagpalain ng Diyos ang linggong ito na haharapin natin at turuan tayong magpakumbaba, mabuhay ng marangal at kagalang-galang. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you, and in His kindness pour out upon you the gifts of His blessings, now and forever. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to His words that they may be filled with everlasting gladness now and forever. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands, made co-heirs with the citizens of heaven forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.